Are you ready for phenomenal thought leadership from the most well-respected leaders in industry? Join us for stellar conversations and sound advice from trailblazers who have a passion for excellence. Learn best practices that will catapult the culture of your company into a new level of greatness. Welcome to Great Companies, Great Leaders. Your host is Christine Gannon. Good morning and welcome to Great Companies, Great Leaders. I'm Christine Gannon, CEO of Brightworks Consulting and super excited to have our guest today. Joanna and I have spent time together um, for the past few years, but we've never even met in person, which I think is the amazingness of the internet and web and how we can all stay connected even when we're not in the same city or state. So Joanna, Dr. Joanna Massey, welcome. Thank you. It's such a pleasure to be here. And I look forward to us meeting in person someday, though. I feel like I know you so well from all of the conversations and work we've done together. Absolutely. And where are you zooming in from this morning? I am currently in New York City, where I moved after 30 years of living in Los Angeles. So home, back home in New York because I grew up here. Awesome. Awesome. So a little bit about Joanna and her background. She's a seasoned C-suite level communications executive and board director with more than 25 years of experience in the media industry at companies such as Condé Nast, Lionsgate, CBS, Viacom, Discovery, and Hasbro. She's managed crisis communications, brand reputation, cultural transformation, and corporate social responsibility. Currently, Dr. Massey is a communications consultant as well as the founder and CEO of the Marketing Communications Think Tank, which I'm gonna talk a little bit about that. A B Corp whose mission is to shift the way we communicate around politicized social issues so that diverse groups of people can have a constructive discussion. So, so needed. She is also a sought after corporate speaker, a board director for publicly held companies and nonprofits, an adjunct professor at Columbia University and the author of two books, Culture Shock, Surviving Five Generations in One Workplace, and Communicating During a Crisis, Influencing Others When the Stakes Are High. Joanna, welcome. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. So the first thing I want to talk about before we get into to more of our questions is related to your newest organization, the Marketing Communications Think Tank. How did that come to be? Interestingly, it was one of those kismet or universe moments where I felt like I was just being prodded to do something that I've wanted to do for a long time. One of my one of the many hats I wear is as an adjunct professor at Columbia University. A fellow professor reached out to me out of the blue and said, I'm doing a documentary on the environment. And I think that one of the reasons we're in the position we are right now is because of the way it's communicated. And I really want you to talk about that on camera. And I said, I'd love to, I have a lot of opinions. So we did that, but in the process of the doing that, it really got me thinking about methods for shifting the way we communicate around politicized social issues. So think the environment, racism, gun violence, you know, big things that impact America where we frequently find ourselves at loggerheads with each other. And how can we, I'm not talking about changing people's minds. I'm talking about what is a what is the method we can use in order to open up to simply hear another perspective mm -hmm. to help us come to sort some sort of to be able to have a dialogue, to bring what I like to say, bring civility back into conversations about our civilization. I love it. So, so needed. I can't wait to see the progress that, that that's going to make. And I can't think of a better person to lead that up, honestly, than you. I think it's, it's amazing. So thank you for doing it. So you've done some significant research and reporting about multi-generational workspaces, and you've written a book related to that. So talk a little bit about how you're witnessing leaders of all, gener all generations managing during this time. I have been fortunate in my career to work in corporate America for decades, and I always worked in the media industry. And so what that means is I'm talking to, meaning promoting to um, a very, you know, younger audiences, but I'm also working with them because in the media industry, we're constantly hiring younger people now known as generation millennial and then Gen Z. And the reason we do that is because this is where really great new innovative ideas come from. And so that's why we're constantly tapping into that. 
So I have been on the forefront of watching these two generations and how they consume, how they, you know, content everything and how they work in their styles. And they're bringing massive changes to the United States and around the world, but definitely to the United States. And as a, I have a doctorate in psychology and I'm a communications executive. And I just was seated, I was in a position to be, to witness this. And so I wrote my book, Culture Shock. And it's really about how, yes, it's about how leaders and businesses adjust to this massive change that these two very large generations are bringing to us. But it's also really uh, self-help-like in a way, if I could say that, self-help with a business title, because I've had people, when I do corporate talks based on the book, I've had people come up to me after corporate talks and say, this was really helpful in dealing with my staff or helpful in dealing with a boss, but it was super helpful in in enabling me to better understand my kids, right? So it's really, or, or from the younger generation's perspective, thank you for helping me better understand my parents and my grandparents. So it's really, for me, everything in communications involves psychology, right? It's literally a lot of what I do is I combine neuroscience and communications and leadership, and I put them together in a really easy to understand clear way. So it's about how do people react to change and stress and conflict? And then how do we communicate in a way and work together in a way that helps move business and society forward? I love it. And you know what I think will be a really interesting study maybe formal or informal, is coming out of COVID and us coming back together in person. You know, if communication is 80% body language and we've all been behind the camera, multi-generations trying to communicate with one another behind the camera in a corporate setting has been challenging to say the least. We've all done it and been successful at, at all kinds of levels. But now coming back together, the transformation and the transition back to um, in-person meetings and in-person one-on-one interactions. It'll be an interesting um, transition. And I think there will be, there'll be some adjusting, right? I absolutely agree with you. It's interesting because we feel like we're a little hidden and removed on camera, but the truth is we're actually not because what you're looking at right now is a square with a much larger look at my face, my facial expressions, my hand gestures. You're seeing me much more closely than you would if we were at a conference room table sitting, you know, right apart. Um, I'm also the focus, right? So if I'm speaking to you, I'm speaking to you, I am the focus and I'm, I'm larger than you know, my head is larger than it is in reality. So <laughs> the interesting thing is that we've we've been bugs under a microscope, a video microscope for the last year as we all interacted and worked together on these conferencing platforms, these video conferencing platforms. And then we're going to go back into rooms where we're, we're actually further removed, even though our perception is we're closer together. So true. So true. And you know, when I look at you, in a meeting room, and if I'm sitting across from you, I'm not only looking at you like I am on camera. I'm looking at all the peripheral going around, but on Zoom, I'm literally just looking at you. So it that will be interesting. It'll be a change and it'll be adjustments. Some people will gravitate to, to it because they've really felt isolated, unhappy, sad. Mm-hmm. It, you know, this situation has been very difficult for some people. Other people will not will not adjust well to it because this situation actually worked for them. Yeah. And I fall in that camp, quite frankly. I'm, I mean, I'm perfectly happy to be in an in-person meeting, but I really liked being able to be at my home, um, you know, not have to travel to meetings, to go from Zoom meeting to Zoom meeting to Zoom meeting. I really became much more productive uh, in certain ways. And now that people are asking for in-person meetings and I'm looking at the time it's going to take to travel, right. I find myself frequently saying, can we make that a Zoom meeting? <laughs> I think I think that will be for a lot of us. I talked to some people at an in-person event this week, and they said, "You know, I don't I don't know that I want to come back. I really like the um, almost the protection Zoom brings to me and the convenience." So let's stay in that topic and talk a little bit about your role as adjunct professor at Columbia. You teach a graduate level course in corporate and crisis communication. What are some of the best practices that you can recommend for leaders today to communicate during these these crazy times we're in with COVID, post-COVID, coming out of a pandemic, hopefully? These are things we haven't had in the past. So what what are some of your recommendations? 
So my second book is actually based entirely on what you just asked. So thank you very much for teeing that up so well. <laughs> I wasn't expecting Perfect. that. Um, but my other book called Communicating During a Crisis really talks about the best ways for leaders to communicate. And granted, the book is really framed around crises. But the truth is, the methods that I talk about in the book, they apply across the board, crises or no crisis. And what I would say is that it's really important for leaders today to be timely mm. with their communications, transparent and truthful. Yes. And here's why. You've got a gen two generations of workers now, millennials and Gen Z, and I'll even put Gen X in there now, who are so used to having this in their hand. Right. This has all of the answers that they want to anything and they can get it immediately on demand. So if you don't provide that information, they're going to go get it from someplace else. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, if you don't provide that information, they expect it. So then you then it, it creates a dynamic that we're not used to at all, True. but this um, C-suite ivory tower will let you know the facts when you need to know them thing doesn't fly anymore with these two, with millennial and Gen Z. That's not the way they were conditioned as kids growing up with, with a digital world. So true. So, so true. I want to stay on this topic for a minute and talk a little bit about leaders and leadership. You've had an amazing career journey. We, we read a little bit of it in, in the bio at the beginning, but that doesn't begin to cover all the experiences you had and the wisdom that you're bringing. Talk a little bit about leaders who've had an impact on you and why. I have two leaders who have had a great impact on me. The one who I always mention when I'm asked this question is a woman named Dawn Ostroff. I have worked for Dawn now three times at three different companies, um, twice as her head of PR and then once as a consultant and writer, uh, speech writer. And Dawn is a visionary and she's a change agent and I love working for her. And she um, told me some of the best advice I ever got was really early on in my career working for her, which was two things. The first was, Joanna, when you have to make a phone call and you think the answer is going to be no, just make the phone call because the worst thing they can say is no. Right. Now, at the time, Don and I worked in Hollywood, and sometimes that no can be pretty nasty in Hollywood. I mean, that's just the nature of that type, that business. And I said that to Don, and she said to me, "It's still just a no." <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Saying? Because, and she said it because she had asked me if I'd made a phone call, and I said, I admitted to her, I said, "You know, I got to be honest. I'm procrastinating on that one." And I told her why, and that's when she gave me that piece of advice, and that was over 20 years ago. And then the other thing that she taught, she taught me, not only in words, but also in action, which is so important as a leader, she taught me that when you see change coming in business, you have to jump on the front of that train. Do, do not wait until that train starts to leave the station and you're grabbing onto the back of it, because that change will drag you and your business through the mud. So right. she is a change agent. She jumps on the front of change. She loves change. You know, I use a, a Google saying here, which is fail fast. Yeah. Meaning get on, try it. If it doesn't work, get out quickly. Just go in with your eyes wide open, but embrace it. And so that's been terrific. And then the other person who's been really influential in my career is Leslie Moonves. And Leslie was the chairman and CEO of CBS. He ended up um, getting caught up in the Me Too movement and um, having to leave CBS. And that was incredibly heartbreaking for me. Um, it wasn't my experience with him as a boss. So, um, I, you know, I don't discount what happened and, and the other women's experiences. But it's, I think that as human beings, we are capable of duality, which means that I can respect him as a leader and appreciate him as a boss and everything I learned from him and, and then also have hold, still hold sure. um, sadness and heartbreak and regret for what I know happened with some other women. Absolutely. I think that's really an important point when we think about, especially the environment that we're in right now. We, we tend to look at things through one lens and there's so many facets to a human being. And again, I'm 100% with you. I'm not discounting any of, of the events or the tragedies that happen with any leaders that potentially make sideways decisions, right? But there are more than 
those things that make up a human being. So acknowledging that. So I appreciate you saying that. I also thank you for mentioning that. And I, that I do write about it. I actually write about Leslie in, in Culture Shock. Because what the one thing I'll say is that I don't use these specific words in culture shock because the book was written a couple of years ago, but the whole cancel culture versus council culture. I, I do acknowledge there are times when people need to be, you know, let go of, fired, sometimes even jailed as we've right. seen, but that there's also a need for council culture, that the way to move forward is to educate people. Powerful white men who have never been in a position that a woman has been in in business don't have the psychological reference to understand right. what it feels like to not be able to say no. And that's where my doctor of psychology background helps because I can understand where yes. people are. Absolutely. And I, Absolutely. I try to teach that to my clients when dealing with, and, and everybody that I interact with. It's, it's important as a leader. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's stay on the leadership topic for a minute. A couple of, of last questions as we round out our time together. A leader going into a significant position at this point in history and at this time, what advice would you give to them? They're entering into a role that potentially will look different than the leadership role has looked in the past. What, besides timely transparent, which I totally agree with you, um, what else would you offer as advice? My advice leans towards the psychological, which is that as children, as infants, we had to first pull ourselves up using our arms, then we crawled, then we walked, then we ran. That as a leader, when anybody, myself included, walks into a new position, there are absolutely going to be things that we need to do that we've never done before, that we just don't have the experience doing. And I personally, myself as a senior level executive and leader, and also with people I've worked with, feel like they ought to know. Like I'm in the position, so I should already be the expert. And it's just not the case. And so I always go back to this idea of, you know, be, take risks and fail fast. Absolutely, absolutely. So I wanna spend more than a minute on this next question because I think it's important. And I know that people can find you online, but there's so much that you offer that I feel like, you know, is so incredibly valuable. And I know leaders that are listening to this podcast are going to want to get in contact with you for a number of reasons, for your services and what you offer, for your wisdom, your experience, but especially at this time right now, as we move into a phase, to your point, we've never been in. So we've never been on lockdown for a year and a half in our country, That I, not in my lifetime. We've not ever come out of a pandemic before. And as a leader, all your advice has been fantastic, but people are, are going to need someone to walk alongside you. Can you just talk a little bit about how they can engage with you and, and, and ways they could engage with you that they might not even be thinking about? Thank you. That's that's great. So absolutely. I mean, one is just to get in touch with me if they're, you know, in a position of wanting to hire a consultant, which is very easy. It's joannamassey.com. So <laughs> hopefully the and and you can contact me and and my team through the website. But also I'm on LinkedIn. I do a lot of thought leadership on LinkedIn. So feel free to follow me and link with me there. Um, and I do some thought, I do some leadership on Instagram, but it's really not the place for it. LinkedIn for professionals, for leaders, for thought leadership around business, that's the place for it. Um, and so those are two really great places. And then of course, there's always my books. Absolutely, absolutely. And your new organization, how about that? How about that organization? How can they connect with that? Fortunately, they can also go to joannamassey.com. Oh, good. Okay. The communications think tank. It is brand new and we are um, developing a method. We're tentatively, and I'm, I'm just going, this is where my, I get a little shy. It's to, the method is tentatively called the Massey method of civil discourse. I, I have to admit, I don't know if anyone else out there has ever put their name on something. There's that moment where you're like, should I do that? Um, but we're developing that method and we will be rolling it out shortly. And when we do, that's when we're going to be, you know, working with companies and organizations in the public sector and in the private sector. Fantastic. Well, Joanna, thank you so much for being a guest today. So appreciate all that you shared and um, look forward to having you back again soon. 
Thank you so much for your time. It's been great speaking with you and thank you. Brightworks Consulting hosts this podcast and YouTube channel to spotlight the leadership around the world that is changing lives. Brightworks offers a myriad of consulting services in the public and private sector to include diversity, equity, and inclusion solutions for any size company. You can find us at www.brightworksconsulting.com. We're honored to have Best Companies AZ as a presenting sponsor for this podcast. Best Companies AZ is your number one source for regional employer branding. You can find them at www.bestcompaniesaz.com.